Good morning, my sweaty little taints. It's Uncle Jules here with a swollen teat of a list for you to gorge yourselves on. Now, the subject of today's video, much like my penis, is on overrated things. Games which scored insanely well with critics and fanboys on their release, but now with the jaded, haggard eyes of hindsight seem to look about as favourable as Ross Kemp in a thong. And you know what's fun? Flying in the face of everyone watching this video with my personal opinions that will no doubt brand me as a f Two-handed wheelbarrow. Well, as my hands seem to be permanently stuck in the middle finger position, I guess I'm the man for the job. With this in mind, I'm Jules, the Southwest Savage of WhatCulture.com, here with a list of the 10 most overrated video games of the 2000s. Number 10, Little Big Planet. At the time of release, Little Big Planet was marketed as one of the first must-own games for the PS3. With its quirky, potentially iconic characters slowly becoming the face of the console, the pressure to become a system seller turned into a self-fulfilling prophecy for Media Molecule's biggest ever release at the time. It's a shame, therefore, that the much-touted endless playability turned out to be a slightly more complex than most map editor. And it didn't help that the little sack chaps handled about as well as drowned cats, and the UI was intuitive in the same way that cutting off your own leg to park inside the disabled Bay of Liddles is an intuitive way to shop. Number 9, Fable 2. Peter, more than you, promises the world to you, but he can't deliver it because he always spouts sh- Upon its release, critics drank deep from the font of St. Peter, giving it nine perfect scores across the board. But for those of you who actually listened to Pinocchio Pete's ramblings early in development, it sounds like we got half the game we were promised. Crappy time-sensitive combat, a lackluster story with a disappointing ending, and the constant hand-holding of the game's breadcrumb system doth not a good game make. And the reason I put the sequel on here instead of the first, which also left gamers flatter than my singing voice, is because you had a chance to fix things, Peter, for f**k's sake! Number 8, GTA 4. Oh, I can hear the keyboards heating up now. But let's just face it, GTA 4 was nowhere near as good as people made it out to be. The switch to a more realistic setting meant that everything was a boring shade of brown and the cars handled like they were being pulled by asthmatic rabbits. The story had its moments for sure, but it was padded out to the extreme with many missions boiling down to drive here, shoot five guys, drive home. The shooting itself was pretty decent and the level of detail in the world was impressive, but my god did it all feel claustrophobic when you had a constant barrage of calls and messages to babysit all the man-childs in the city. And if you're still mad at me, then look at GTA 4 and then at GTA 5 and you tell me that Rockstar didn't realise its misstep and took it back to the insanity that we all wanted. Number 7, Halo 2. Now, this is a tough one, as if we're separating the game's two main points, the single player and multiplayer, then it's like yin and yang, night and day, Ben Potter and Jules Gill. Seriously, we don't sound alike, you guys. You need to get your f***ing hearing checked. To put it into perspective, here's a visual representation of the multiplayer for Halo 2, giving players across the world a chance to unite under the warming glow of Xbox Live in a full, frantic fricassee of fun. Mm, mm, mm. Now here's a visual representation of Halo 2's stop-start campaign which sequel baited the hell out of itself, was confusing and made you play as the Arbiter, an albeit cool character, but who nobody wanted to suit up as. Ew. To quote Ben Potter's dad, Matt Berry, Need I say more? Number 6, Mass Effect. Mass Effect as a series is pretty great. It's had a fair few hiccups in its time, but overall it's a franchise which has pretty much dominated the sci-fi RPG genre. But let's not forget that the first Mass Effect wasn't all that hot when it was first released. True, the game was bursting with content, lore and aliens to shoot, but there was definitely something off with the actual gameplay. The combat was stiff and very rarely felt like you were actually firing your gun, the AI was sent to kamikaze mode, and let's not forget those insipidly boring Mako missions. These were so bad that I think in fact that the Titanic probably handled better. Number 5, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Right, so I like Metal Gear Solid. I don't love it, but I like it. What I hated, however, was seeing the utter franchise fellatio that was performed on Metal Gear Solid 4. I remember seeing Perfect Tens pouring out for this game and the word masterpiece being used more than a new age parent trying to convince you that their four-year-old is the next Da Vinci. But to put it plainly, nearly half of the game's runtime is cutscenes. And the other half doesn't enforce stealth in the same way that previous titles had, instead letting you run and gun just as easily as hiding. Adding to this was a story that nearly retconned all of the events of Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, mainly because the narrative had been written into a corner, and what you're left with is a game which is everything you expect from a Metal Gear Solid title, you know, the wacky story, the crazy bosses and the sneaky stealth, but the balance of these things was totally off and as such it feels really 
lackluster. Number 4. L.A. Noir. Man, this game was good looking. From the realistic looking cars which the devs had modelled inside and out perfectly to the uncanny valley performances of the outstanding cast, as a technical marvel, this is a really great title. It's a shame, therefore, that there was bugger all to do in the game, with the world being devoid of activities and any real sense of engagement. The story too felt pretty clunky in areas which was revealed to be because the devs had to cut large chunks out due to a pressured time window. All in all, this made the game feel like a beautiful but soulless affair, which is a real shame. But to be fair, we do need to give this game one extra special mention, in that the hat shooting mechanics are probably the best I've seen in any title so far. So, it's got that going for it. Number 3. Gran Turismo 5 Gran Turismo has always been a game for the racing purists out there, the type of person who loves to strap on leather, sit uncomfortably and let a machine take them to pleasure town. You know, like your mum. However, when it was announced in 2005 but then delayed until 2010, hazard lights should have been going off. The devs stated that they wanted to release the best, most realistic racing game ever, and that clearly translated into a $60 million budget and a five-year wait. What we finally got was undoubtedly a competent racing game. Hell, I'd even say it was above okay. But it was held down by an overall feeling that the game was just archaic compared to the other racing titles which had been released in the half-decade window. The damage system was laughable, having next to no effect on handling, the AI were a bunch of Sunday drivers, and the presentation in some areas looked ripped from the PS2. Hugely ambitious, but also hugely disappointing. Number 2. Sonic Adventure 2 Now, the opening of this game is outstanding. The music is amazing, the focus on speed is constant, and it's just so over the top that you can't help but feel that this is the Sonic game of the ages. Then it slows down, and the characters start talking. I'm out of here! The levels become slogs of waiting, then running a little, then killing enemies to lower barriers, and it just becomes painfully aware of how this is not what the opening sold you. Knuckles' stages in particular became the bane of gamers, as the emerald pieces he was meant to collect were randomised, meaning that stages would boil down to tests of patience. So to all of you who are now sweatily typing, don't you dare mess with the fur, just play the game again. And I'm talking beyond the first couple of levels. And number one, Pokemon Generation 4. Oh yeah, those keyboards better be on fire right now because I'm dissing a Sonic game and a Pokemon title. Is he trolling? Is he some hipster twat? He just comes and just shit on everyone's favorite games. Is he single? To all of those answer, yeah, kind of. But seriously, let's take an objective look at the fourth generation of the Pokemon franchise and we'll see that it really didn't offer much of substance when it came to the core gameplay. The story felt very samey and many fans of the series agreed that this was on the lower end of imagination when it came to what Pokemon were introduced. Now, I don't hate this generation, but when you look at what the previous and next gen did in terms of features and core experiences, it's hard not to view this as just a big stepping stone for the series. And that's our list. Got any other overrated titles that we missed from the noughties? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. And if you want to see the best thing ever which is totally not overrated then come chat to me on twitter at retro j with a zero if you enjoyed the video then like share and subscribe for more as always i've been jules for whatculture.com and i'll speak to you soon